So welcome everyone. It's good to see you. Now, um, today the topic is kindness or the role that kindness plays in the development of the meditative stages and how important it is and how to integrate it. So as you already know, the meditation is generally based on a few stages, <clears throat> at least as we are practicing it here. Always starts with an element of preparation. The first part of this preparation is the posture. It should always be upright and relaxed. So not upright and stiff, but upright and soft. Okay, so comfortably upright takes a long time to develop that posture you can actually practice yoga to support that process or tai chi or anything that helps you to stretch out the body and uh, slowly develop good posture for sitting also another important quality of the posture is stillness if you want to learn to sit still the way to do that is maybe sit for a week for 15 minutes each morning and evening then next week add three minutes or five if you feel brave and then really commit to sitting completely still for that time for another week and you add more again until you can sit for an hour completely still give it time there's no need to rush you rather want to do it right do it properly bring quality into the process not trying to finish it as fast as possible. That's not the point of the whole thing. The second element of preparation is our breath. Particularly in stage one and in the beginning of the meditation, you want to breathe deeply. The breath also has two qualities. One, it should be deep and two, it should be comfortable. Breathing deeply is achieved by breathing with your diaphragm, breathing with your belly, not lifting the lungs up with the muscles in your shoulders, but actually pulling the lungs downwards by extending the diaphragm to the sides so expanding the rib cage to both sides and to the front and to the back as well allowing the diaphragm to sink the lungs down so the air is pulled into that there's a word for that it's called bellow breathing like the bellows that you use to light a fire when you're expanding the belly it pulls the air in when you're compressing the belly it pushes the air back out so the two qualities of the breath once more deep and comfortable in the later stages of the meditation it's just comfortable in the beginning you want to breathe deeply to ventilate the body to have a good exchange of gas to also really clear the mind and calm the nervous system the third element of preparation is super important it's the attitude that you bring to the practice i mention it frequently uh, you can have the most fancy technique, the most fancy teacher, the most fancy community, the best books. You can be a super philosophical genius. But if your attitude is wrong, the whole practice won't work. You might be sitting for years and years, not getting anywhere in your practice. In fact, it ha happens to a lot of people who practice meditation that they get stuck every now and then. The reason for that, or a major reason for that, is attitude. We very often worry about the techniques and the details of the techniques and so forth rather than actually becoming aware of who does the meditation how are you doing it if you have a terrorist on one hand and a saint on the other and you have a million dollars in your hand to give to any one of those two who would you empower the saint or the terrorist I know it's a loaded question, so yes, you obviously would empower the same, right? The same thing goes for your attitude. If your attitude is the attitude of a saint, in other words, if you're kind, if you're compassionate, all power to you. If the attitude is an attitude of self-hatred, if you don't like yourself, for example, you're constantly criticizing yourself, you're always uh, unhappy with yourself, it's never enough, I'm not good enough, I can never do it, if it's like self-disparaging and so forth, then if you add power to that, 
you're adding power to that negative self. So you find yourself in two years' time practicing meditation, and you find that your self-hate has increased a lot. You're sitting down for 30 minutes and you're criticizing yourself for those 30 minutes, really being completely unable to relax. It all boils down to the attitude. So ask yourself, what kind of attitude in your practice do you really want to empower? What kind of attitude is most helpful? And it also, again, it's two. Like the posture has two qualities, upright and relaxed. The breath has two qualities, comfortable and deep. The attitude has two qualities, kind and compassionate. In other words, you can also say accepting and understanding. So accepting here means when you're confronted with a negative feeling, an emotion that you usually want to reject or get rid of, that you don't like, usually we offer resistance to that. We do not want to accept it. Okay, We try to get rid of it. And we might use a lot of fancy techniques to get rid of it. Even we might use the technique of kindness and acceptance to try to get rid of it. Like, let's say you're feeling an unpleasant sensation in your heart area, like kind of like grief or anxiety, something strange that you can't really put your... you can't really define it, you don't know what it is, it's just really bothersome and every time you meditate it comes up. So then you try to get rid of it as first, yeah? You breathe it away, you inhale light into it, uh, you're trying to heal it, um, you're, you're saying mantras to it. I don't know, there's so many ways to trying to get rid of this, okay? And then you hear these profound instructions on just accept it. And so you go, okay, well, if I accept it, then it might go away. And so you're sitting down and you're using acceptance as a technique not to confront yourself, not to see into yourself, not to understand, but it's just another way of ignoring it. It's like you get a visitor coming to you and you say, I accepted you, can you please go now? <laughs> okay, so a good way to actually put that to the test and to see whether you are fully accepting something or not is to ask yourself, could I now stay with that for the rest of my day, the rest of this week, the rest of this month, the rest of my life? If that would not leave me, would that be okay? And only if your answer is yes to that, the acceptance is complete. So that gives you a way to measure your degree of acceptance. Are you in a subtle way trying to get rid of something? It won't work. It will backfire. You will waste a lot of time trying to get rid of yourself. You can't get rid of things. You can suppress them, you can ignore them for a while, but getting rid of them doesn't work by resisting them. You might have heard that famous saying, what you resist persists. All right. So resistance is not the way. Another way that we can't use is following it. So if you're following it, it means you're actually listening to it, or you feel like that's who I am. You're following it, you're identified with it. It will last that way for much longer than it usually does. So accepting it means welcoming it, being kind to it giving it some space. And that you have to practice for yourself. This is something that you have to experience in your practice. So when you're confronted with something uncomfortable, instead of trying to get rid of it, open up to it. It wants to be seen. Of course, it itself, the feeling itself, doesn't have any will to it. Yes, it is not like, oh, I hope Toby will see me. But you could describe it in that way, okay? It's something that wants to come back to you. It's something that wants to be reunited with you. An image that I sometimes give, it's like an abandoned child 
which is chained into the garden because it's a bit smelly, it doesn't look as good as the other children, it's a bit of a strange child, so it's it's so we chain it into the garden. We don't want to have anything to do with it. So we close the door, the, the chained child is outside, and inside you have a Christmas dinner with all the other children of the family. And so the chained child outside sees that, sees your guys enjoying a nice Christmas evening in the warmth and outside it's cold and it's snowing and it scratches on the door. It wants to come back in but it hasn't showered for months so it's super smelly and it is really angry because you didn't let it in and you didn't <laughs> allow it to enjoy the nice family atmosphere, okay? So your negative emotions are just like that. They belong. They are you, in a way. They are part of you. Discarded, cut-off aspects of your psyche. That Carl Jung calls that the shadow. So you have discarded aspects, things that you do not want to associate with. No, this is not my... I'm not feeling that. We all carry a tremendous amount of darkness. We carry in our hearts unacknowledged hate, vengefulness, violence, cruelty. It's all there. And we're busy trying to keep it down. And sometimes if you raise to most sophisticated states in your meditation practice and you see light and you feel really heavenly, these kind of shadow elements become super powerful also. At the same time that you're empowering the light aspect of yourself, very often the shadow aspect becomes increasingly more powerful. All right, so watch out for that. It's really important to complete your practice to learn to accept all of yourself. But that includes those aspects that we discard, that we do not want to have anything to do with. And a fundamental practice is that when you're experiencing negative emotion, painful emotion and all that, then look, it's that child scratching on the door and it needs you to let it in. And it will be uncomfortable to let it in. It will be uncomfortable to open up to it. It's much easier to go and watch a movie. It's much easier to take out your phone and watch something on the internet. It's much easier to get distracted with all kinds of things. And that will be your first tendency. The first tendency is like, okay, I'm going to finish my session now, uh, I'm going to continue tomorrow, and uh, now I'm going to watch a movie and you know, just cuddle up with my significant other and have a nice evening and just drop, drop the whole spiritual practice for today. It's enough. That might be your first tendency. Or you don't even want to just sit down. You feel an aversion to the meditation practice. But when you reunite the child, the abandoned child, to the family, the family grows in power. There's now more hands in the house, more hands that can help, more hands that can heal, more hands that are supportive. The whole bunch has grown. So it grows in power as well. So these discarded elements, they are also discarded energy that is not available to you as long as you're suppressing it. When it reunites, when it is reintegrated into your being, there is very often an experience of a tremendous amount of energy coming up and power and happiness and joy. When something that you have abandoned is coming back, when you have seen through it, when you have truly forgiven yourself. All that is an effect of kindness. And kindness, the root of kindness, as I just said before, is acceptance. Just being able to accept the fact that you hurt. We all do. And we're all busy trying not to. There it is. So instead of trying not to hurt, there has to be a willingness to hurt. 
a willingness to enter discomfort. That's where true kindness can grow. And that's where it grows fast. It grows in uncomfortable situations. Situations are difficult. Situations you do not want to face. That's where you truly grow spiritually. Avoiding ourselves, and all too often spiritual practice becomes another tool of avoiding ourselves. Like you can visualize fancy things and give yourself names and wear a dress and float through life, you know. That's all possible, but it's a huge scene. It's very often going along with a lot of avoidance. A lot of uh, that, that whole elaborate spiritual self-image that we create very often is just like a carpet that we use to cover a corpse. It's a beautiful carpet, like a Persian rug, you know. Looks amazing, and maybe you even put some perfume on top of it. Nice. It all looks great on the outside, but on the inside, there is a lot of skeletons in the closet. And you know, these skeletons in the closet, that's what you want to hang out with. That's where the real work happens. This is where true transformation can take place. Light work actually means shadow work. You can't do light work if you're not confronting what needs to be confronted, what needs to be seen. So spiritual practice can easily turn into some sort of drug replacement. I just get spaced out for a little while so I don't have to deal with myself. I just do meditation so I actually can avoid the world for a little while. But that's not the point. We're not sitting down and meditating so to avoid the world. We sit down and meditate so we can understand the world. And upon understanding, then there is release, then there is proper letting go. And that points to a happiness which is beyond that kind of changing, dual happiness that we usually experience. And kindness can directly lead you there, the ability to accept. And compassion is the ability to understand. Like many people can understand their friends when they hurt, right? If your best friend hurts, if your best friend has some trouble and they call you and, and describe, you know, oh, I just have a relationship breakup or I'm feeling uncomfortable and you understand them, right? Because you had the experience yourself in your life, right? You know how it hurts. And so what do you tell your friend? Yeah, I understand. Sometimes you know instinctively all they need is someone to listen to. They need a shoulder to cry on. They just need someone to understand them. I just had that quite recently. I, I wrote to my teacher that I feel quite alone. It was in a time when I, had great, I went through great emotional distress. And uh, th the simple answer from my teacher was, yes, I know that. I often feel alone too. And I was like, wow. Wow. <laughs> I've been understood. And that was enough. <laughs> so he didn't give me a talk like, yeah, uh, what, you're still feeling alone? What, how many years are you meditating now? You shouldn't feel alone. You should be kind. You should connect it to, to all living beings. And... You know, kindness takes away fear and blah, blah, blah. No, he just told me that he also knows that feeling enough for me to, to heal that aspect, enough to let go and relax. Oh, I'm not alone in this. Can you give yourself that level of understanding that you would give your best friend? You're hurting. They're, they're, you, you carry a lot of wounds with you. Is that okay? Or do you still demand to be absolutely filtered, perfect? So yesterday I saw an advert for an, another app in which you can actually modify your face. Like you can make your eyes bigger, your nose slimmer, bigger. This is hideous. The concept of that is hideous. I wonder how many people will see that as hideous. Or how many people will feel like, wow, great. Now I can finally look the way I should 
and I can finally be liked by my friends for posting fake pictures of myself. What boggles my mind is that these things sell, that there are people who loathe them. Doesn't that point to a fact that we really don't like ourselves? We can't stand our face. We need to constantly change it. That is a lack of kindness. That is what self-hate is, expressed in our little things that we do on the phone, exposing ourselves to violent uh, images, to violent news, to all these problems continuously, day on and day out. It is self-abuse. It's like eating poisonous food through your eyes. It's like smoking, all this kind of stuff, right, that we do. So it's really important to, to recognize the way we harm ourselves and how we have wounded ourselves since a long, long time. And then to be with the, the result of this and allow it to heal in your presence. So it's much like nursing yourself, really, meditation. That's the role of kindness. Then you come into the first stage of the meditation. How do you integrate kindness in the first stage? Breathing in, feeling your legs. Breathing out, relaxing the legs. How is kindness expressed here? Well, smile into your legs. Enjoy your legs. Appreciate your legs. Bring some warmth into it. Notice that, wow, there are legs. Listen to your legs, a wonderful expression of kindness, listening to someone. Listen to your legs as you breathe in and let them do what they really want to do as you breathe out, which is relax, follow gravity. Then you do the same with your belly. You breathe in happily embracing your belly, seeing that there is your belly, it feels like this. Really connecting with it, smiling into it. Like every breath that you're pulling into the body part is a bit like you giving that body part a gentle massage from the inside. You're being really kind, both thought and action to your body. And if there is pain, you're embracing the pain too. You're kind to the pain. You're not trying to avoid it. So there's no need to change your posture. Only if it's absolutely unbearable, you can't stand anymore. Okay, change your posture, no problem. But if you want to cultivate stillness in the posture, yeah, there will be some pain. That's your opportunity to deal with it with kindness. And you'll be surprised how much of the pain is actually in the mind and how little of the pain is in the body. And that's a wonderfully liberating insight. It's a direct understanding of, wow, the most discomfort that I feel in the body is not the body, it's the mind. And then you learn to be kind to that discomfort and suddenly the body feels great. So this is in stage one. In stage two, if you're present, you receive sounds, feelings with a joyful type of kindness. So I'm here, here right now. And yes, then the mind will get distracted. Is it allowed to get distracted? Are you okay with distraction? Kindness again. You're not demanding perfect concentration. A, a nice image that I like, possibly because of my German-European kind of background, is the image of an angel standing behind me as I meditate. A beautiful figure of light. Somehow that resonates like Earlier on, when I was younger, I would just completely rebel against such images to say like, ah, that's way too cheesy and it's way too hippie, you know. But actually, there's something that resonates about this great figure of light standing behind you. How would an angel look at you?
How would they receive your pain, your hurt, your struggles, if that angel would see you sit down there, trying to meditate, doing your thing? Receive yourself like that. I would call that maybe higher self. You are able to receive yourself from a perspective that is firmly rooted in acceptance and understanding and great kindness. And you can feel that and you can be that. You can be that divine expression. You can receive yourself with such a powerful uh, perspective. And it is wonderful. It's very healing. And if you do that enough, one thing happens that's quite funny. It's a side effect. You stop demanding others to make you happy. Because you're giving yourself that kind of powerful attention, you stop placing demands on other people. You feel full, fulfilled. You feel good. So you don't need to ask other people to entertain you. That stops. Uh, instead, you can let them free. You can appreciate them as what they are. And that's just like a skillful means. You use the image of an angel, you use the image of the Buddha. Could you feel like the Buddha looking at yourself? Uh, use another image which is a bit more human. Like another image that I often give is, how would your mother have felt when she first held you in her arms? Just after you were born, how did she feel about you? Can you see yourself through these eyes? How would someone that loves you very much, like your spouse, how would they see you? Let that touch your heart a little bit. Let it open the heart a little bit and feel accepted, feel welcome in both your pain and your pleasure, in your goodness and your badness, in all aspects. So that's the role that kindness plays. And of course it goes deeper in each stage, but this is the first two stages and they will already make a huge difference. I recommend to practice that diligently. All right, so that's all that comes to mind for today. Are there any questions?